Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to the second info webinar about the program Start. My name is Christina Simons, and I am the head of the Start program. And I will have the pleasure to present it and also to answer all the questions you might have. So the agenda, before presenting you the start, going through who can apply, how it works, the application process, and the team behind the program, I will introduce you to the S3 project. After that, we will have a Q and A moment. If by any chance, do you have questions during the presentation, do please put them in the chat. Okay, let's move on. S3 stands for Southern European Entrepreneurship Engine, and it's a project funded by the European Commission, put together by these four institutions, Austral from Spain, EPLO from Greece, ICTEC from Portugal, and IDI from Ireland, with the mission to decrease the market risk for the South European deep tech. And how do we do it? by accelerating deep tech projects coming from research teams and deep tech solutions coming from startups and SMEs, both having to impact social and economic development to a more sustainable future. Before continuing, maybe it's the time to clarify the expression deep tech. Deep tech does not relate to the technology itself but to the way we approach reality. Meaning that there is no such thing as a, deep tech, uh, as a deep technology. Instead, deep tech at its course relies on recombining existing technologies or on leveraging emerging technologies, always rooted in science and advanced engineering, that offer significant advances over those that are currently in use. In a word, deep tech approach implies one, being problem oriented and not technology driven. Two, when searching the solution, being rooted in science and advanced engineering, thus more than often, uh, more often than not, generating defensible IP. Third, the deep tech approach shifts the innovation equation from bytes only to bytes and atoms. So from digital to physical backed by digital. And last but not least, it relies on a deeply interconnected ecosystem. And how we are going to decrease the market risk for the Southern European deep tech ecosystem by upscaling researches to an entrepreneurship mindset, by supporting growth stage startups in business development, brokering them the access to investment and facilitating open innovation with the industry. And all of this, um, we will contribute to the sustainable development goals uh, defined by the United Nations. How are we going to do this? Through different programs defined and designed, taking into account the maturity level of ideas. So start, charge, and reverse. I will begin by the charge. So its target are startups in their growth phase of development. For them, we create a mentoring program that will support them on developing a bulletproof investment ready business plan, a better understanding how to protect their IP, on being better positioned to get access to both dilutable and non-dilutable funding, and last but not least, to connect them to industry leaders and strong innovators ecosystem. The reverse was designed to support scaling up startups. So the stage over the, um, 
the growth startups and SMEs to the deep tech solution providers who through an open innovation program will get access to a network of large corporations with challenges or problems that need to be addressed by a well-defined development project. In a word, the reverse, it's a brokerage program. And finally, the start. So the start was designed for a research team with deep tech projects grounded in a scientific discovery or meaningful engineering innovation that want to explore, explore the uh, path from the lab to the market. And because we want to leave a legacy in the Southern uh, Europe, Europe, we want, um, we decided to uh, open this program also to the technology transfer officers that want to learn a thoroughly tested methodology to foster science-based entrepreneurship and technology commercialization within their communities. The fields of applications are extensive and comprehend agriculture sciences, engineering and technology, life sciences and physical sciences. So the S3 start aims to provide skills in knowledge commercialization, link science and technology to products and market needs, evaluate the different paths to move technology to the markets and better communicate science to a business audience. I'm very pleased to announce that the program S3, S3 Start is now one of the courses listed on the European Institute of Technology and Innovation Deep Tech Talent Initiative. Uh, and so I think it's maybe the right time to show you a testimonial from a participant of this year's edition. Alexandra and her team came from ne the National and Capodestrian University of Athens, uh, and they are developing biological control agents, biofertilizers and biostimulants from fungi. So therefore bringing a biotech project. And they totally recommend our program. They were very happy at the end with the results of their participation. So summarizing, the Southern European Deep Tech Research Teams and TTOs, by participating and fully embracing the START program, they will have the possibility to assess the social and economic value of their research acquire communication skills to convey research and scientific discoveries to a non-scientific audience, or more specifically, to a business audience, and gain skills in technology commercialization. The program is composed by 18 weeks, and those 18 weeks um, and uh, um, uh, have 21 hours of online training in the early stages of business development. Uh, so once in, uh, per week, uh, all the teams that are participating will have uh, one hour um, and a half long tutorials. Then they will also have 12 hours of mentoring with industry experts that will help them to make decisions and will help them to uh, develop their business case. And those meetings uh, are held every two weeks. Then they will also have eight hours of webinars um, with themes absolutely relevant to help them to uh, build their business case, like the ones mentioned here. Uh, technology commercialization, intellectual property, business development, path need to zero, how to pitch, etc. Network, they will have also the, the possibility of networking with industry leaders and showcase 
their uh, opportunities, their business opportunities at the S3 Open Day that will be held at the end of the program. And last, but maybe the more important thing to mention here in this slide is the weekly deliverables, what we call the building blocks of the program that at the end of the day are homework um, that uh, occur in, on a weekly basis. Uh, that will, and these are the basis for uh, building the business case. Okay, so they are really, really important. And we estimate that, that they will take um, on average three, three additional hours per week to complete. In order to get the most of the program, um, hard working and commitment on a daily basis and by all team members are needed. That's why we encourage that the participation of a minimum of two persons and a maximum of five members per team. Okay, maybe it's again time to uh, show you and um, share with you another testimonial, this time from uh, TTO, coming from a, spe uh, a Spanish um, hospital, Hospital University German Strius, and where it clearly uh, backs up what I just said, because he mentioned how hard work and uh, how demanding is this program compared to others uh, where he participated in the past. So let's now turn to the content of the program. But before, let me talk to you about the two physical outcomes of the program. Uh, and one, and in my opinion, the most important, is a 25 to 30 pages of a well-grounded business case, and which is the, the embryo of an investment-ready business plan with exactly the same structure but less information because obviously uh, a group of uh, on average three to four uh, persons during 18 weeks cannot uh, get more enough information to um, put together an investment ready business plan so it's for that you need more time and more information uh, and this document will be uh, very helpful for applying to European funds. And the second um, physical outcome is the pitch presentation of the project specifically prepared for a business audience. This pitch will be done, as I told you before, at the very end of the program at the S3 open day. Coming back to the program, um, it is divided in three different phases. Along the process, you will not notice the difference of these phases, but um, the program is structured this way. So the first phase is what we call the ideation phase, where uh, out of the technology or the scientific discoveries you bring, uh, we try to devise and uh, conceptualize multiple product concepts, uh, utilizing uh, several uh, tools, but the most important one is the one mentioned here, which, uh, whose name, uh, uh, which name is technology, markets, uh, technology product market. Then the second phase, uh, after uh, by a tool that will allow you uh, with an educated guess, uh, decide among the multiple product concepts uh, you have um, one product and for that product you are going to um, through a, a series of and a set of tools we will provide you are going to assess uh, if 
there is any fatal flaw that do not allow you to um, go to the market with that chosen product. So that if you find a fatal flaw, you can come back. That's why it's important to devise in the very first phase multiple product concepts whenever is possible, obviously, from your technology. So that if you find a fatal flaw, as I was telling you, you can come back and pick another um, product concept and do uh, the exercise all over again. And finally, the third phase, the commercialization phase, where you are invited to devise the final strategy to go to the market. So not only the market strategy, so what is the market uh, entry, uh, what are the markets or the market segments we are going to choose to expansion the sales, but also the business model and the development roadmap. Okay, so uh, moving forward, um, let me talk about uniqueness of this program. So as we are asking for uniqueness from for your technologies, we also need to provide it. And so why do we consider our approach is unique? First of all, because the program is um, so structured and so demanding that it emulates a real startup experience um, with all the work uh, around your project and around the weekly deliverables, um, allowing you to uh, create a common language and framework for the action of all the team. Uh, secondly, in order to uncover the business opportunity, we are not departing from an idea uh, as the most, um, as the major part of the programs that exist uh, do. We are departing from your scientific discovery or from your technology. So, we are looking in the beginning of the process at your technology, and we are looking for the capabilities of your technology that will enable a product or a service or a process even to do something that the customers are looking for in the market. Okay, let's now talk about the application process. Uh, and before that, let me size this opportunity to let you know that all the participants in the program, that is all the team members, faculty, mentors, um, will have to sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, um, so that everyone can be uh, confident and secure about uh, eventually uh, talking about their secrets. Okay, so the application process. Uh, the applications are already open uh, and they will run until the 12th of January. The selection process will occur between the 13th and the 25th of January. And uh, the evaluation process will have two different phases. The first phase is uh, it's going to be done by the S3 project partners, and we will together um, uh, validate if all the applications are conformed the uh, eligibility criteria. And the second phase uh, is going to be done by a board of remote peer reviewers. Um, that will select the teams and all the teams will be also selected for an interview. Okay, uh, the announcement is going to be done in the 26th of January and the program will run from the 6th of February until the, uh, June the 6th with the uh, ending as I told you before, with the S3 open day. So all the teams pitching their uh, projects. Okay, so the application form for the research teams. It's very, very easy to do. 
this application. We used to tell the teams that if they are um, taking more than uh, one hour and a half or two hours to do this application, something is wrong because it's really, really easy and quick to do so. Obviously, uh, everyone needs to be identified, so all team members and the R&D organizations they belong to. Uh, we would like to have a description of the proposed technology or scientific discovery. Not, we don't want to know your magic, so we don't want you to describe how it functions, but what it does, okay? Uh, then we would like you to describe the uniqueness of the technology, so where the innovativeness of the technology or the scientific discovery relies on. The status of development and an outline of the main tasks required for the next stage of development. The science field of the project. The sustainable development goals the project uh, aim to address. Um, the IP status and a statement of the motivation of the team to participate. Let me add something important here. When we ask for the status of development and when we ask for the IP status, this is just for our curiosity and for uh, being aware of what to do with all the teams. This is not a criteria for ranking the applications. For the technology transfer offices, uh, we will ask the identification of the individual, uh, the identification of the organization, um, the CV of the individual, the letter of the R&D organization supporting the application and a motivation letter to participate in the program, namely, and this is important, showing us how, in their opinion, this program is going to help them to support their uh, community in technology commercialization. We strongly we strongly advise all uh, technology transfer officers to apply with a research team so that they will do the program as a full member of the research team, embracing a more thoroughly and fully experience, okay? Um, and we would like also that when the TTO is applying with a team from the very same organization that they mention this in the motivation letter. Okay, let's now talk about the criteria for ranking the applications. So for the, to the research teams, um, we have three different uh, criteria. So being one, the perceived breadth of the technology so that the platform potential of the technology, meaning that with the very same technology, we can, uh, whatever we design or we conceptualize being product, a process or a service can serve different applications, okay? The perceived depth of the technology and the theft is related to the uniqueness of the technology. And finally, the motivation to participate in the training program and the entrepreneurial spirit of the team, okay? Um, the motivation to participate is very, very important for us because this program is free for all the participants. Uh, but as you can imagine, there is a cost a huge cost of a program with uh, this length. Uh, and so we want to be almost sure that all the participant teams will stay with us until the very end of the program. That's why 
teams need to be very motivated and need to show us th that motivation. The criteria for uh, the technology transfer officers are uh, the motivation to participate, again, is very important. And again, it's very important to show us how this program is going to help them to improve um, their skills uh, in performing their work. The geograph geographic dispersion, and obviously that uh, depends on uh, the geographic dispersion of the applications, but um, we would like to cover uh, on the most extensive uh, number of countries of the Southern Europe. Um, so it's not expected to have more than one TTO per country. And um, while being associating to a team is not mandatory, we uh, will strongly advise it because it greatly enhances how much uh, they will uh, get from the program. Because if you look at all the activities that I showed you before, if the TTO does not belong to a team of researchers, the only activities they can do is participating on the weekly uh, tutorials uh, and assisting to the webinars. But they cannot go to the um, mentors meeting. And this is a strong um, and a very useful uh, way of learning, not, not even doing the weekly deliverables, okay? Uh, so it is really important for them to come with, um, together with a research team from their institutions. Okay, so uh, the submissions of the applications are then only via uh, the F6X platform, not by our website, but in the F6S platform. Um, there are two different uh, locations for the applications, one for the research teams and another one for uh, the um, TTOs, okay, technology transfer offices. Finally, and still related to the application, uh, at our website, here mentioned in this slide, you can get all the information I gave you today and I strongly recommend you to read carefully all the documents you will prepare for you before applying. But nevertheless, if by any chance you still have doubts, do not hesitate to contact us. Finally, we strongly um, advise you to uh, respect the deadline of the, um, to submit the proposal, which is the five o'clock set time of 12th of January, because we are going to be very strict with this um, deadline. Finally, the team behind the project. So let me now present you, uh, Claudia as the COO of ICTEC and the S3 project coordinator. Katia is responsible for all the marketing and communication of IC Tech. Nuno is back me uh, with the START program, meanwhile being enrolled with other IC Tech programs. Pedro uh, is our CEO. And last but not least, Roger Dibo, our Since Forever advisor. This team altogether has decades of working on technology innovation. And finally, and before jumping to the Q&A part, uh, a final testimonial from a team coming from Italy of this year's edition two with a project that efficiently produces carbonates. So magnesium, calcium, sodium which are high value products for use in infra infrastructure, industry, and agriculture. And they are telling us that uh, this program helped them 
a lot when they were preparing the application for another European project. So for applications, uh, please check uh, the F6S platform. But before that, uh, check our uh, website, follow us in our social media, or contact us directly for make any question. And now I'm ready for your questions. We have a, a question from Maria Joao. Okay. Um, hello, hello everyone. Good afternoon, and Hi. thank you for this for this webinar. Uh, I am a technology transfer officer, uh, okay. and uh, well. Uh, I, I work in IT, an uh, R&D research um, uh, institute for telecommunications, and we want to um, spread the, the word about this program among our researchers. Um, so we don't know if we will have some, some team popping up. So I, I would like to participate in the program, whether we had a, a team or not. And my question is, um, for instance, if we have a team that wants mm -hmm. to participate, I will uh, join the application within the research team, or do I need to make a separate uh, application identifying the team that is also uh, trying to apply? The second hypothesis you gave. So both applications are independent. Okay. TTOs apply themselves alone, and the teams apply uh, in another, even in, in another application form. The application forms are different. But for the TTOs that are coming with a team, we will ask you in the letter uh, that is one of the demands for the application of the TTOs, in the letter, please do mention that uh, there is a team from your institutions that are applying to to whom to, and you would uh, like to be added to that team. Okay. So it's a separate um, application. Okay. So I think I will have to wait uh, up to up to the very end. I will see to, to see if that we have another team because I think I would I would it would be very interesting. Uh, yeah. Of course, with a team would be even better. But without a team, I, I still think that we I I I can learn a lot. Yeah, and help but, in the future other researchers. Yeah, but you will learn a lot more if you were uh, with a team. Because I as I explained before, there are some activities that if you do not have a team, you cannot participate. And I would say that those are the most important activities in terms of the learning process itself because the tutorials you will get the information basically you have you get some concepts uh, to contextualize uh, the information needed for performing the deliverables but uh, when I'm doing the tutorials my main uh, objective with tutorials is to help you understand what you need to do to do the deliverables. But working hands-on with a real project is when you are doing the deliverables and when you are talking in the meetings with the mentors. So I understand. In my personal opinion, and, uh, and I'm doing this uh, since tw uh, 2012, so... Uh, the most important activities from a learning perspective are the, doing the, the teamwork of doing deliverables and the, the discussions and the meetings with the, the mentors. That's why we strongly advise the TTOs to come with the team. Thank you. Just one question uh, for the, to, to spread out the word among our researchers. Do you have um, a press kit that we could use? Yes, we have. Okay. Uh, we have your name and then um, we will send it to you. Thank you very much. Right, Claudia, we have, we know, okay. 
any we have another question from I'm, I'm gonna try to say your name is it Ut utku you can you can unmute if you want to ask the question yes thank you uh hello uh thank hi you. hi uh thank you very much for the presentation uh my name is Utku Sechkin. uh i'm the head of the uh, gazi university technology transfer office in ankara turkey Okay. So uh, I have a question about uh, the application. Uh, for, uh, as you mentioned in your slide, the, the uh, teams and uh, R and D organizations. I, I I don't understand who are the R and D organizations. Well, it's uh, where they uh, belong to, where they develop their uh, technology. So the university or the lab where they work. So we can deem university as an R&D organization? Yeah, 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 sure. Ah, okay. 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 So and, uh, one last question. Uh, we, uh, as I understand, uh, TPO has to apply with a team, but any other teams can, uh, can any other teams from the uh, university uh, apply? Yeah, by sure. Yourself? Sure, sure, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So what you are asking, just to be clear, is that from the very same university, we can have more than one team being one of the teams uh, applying with a TTO. Is that your question? Yes. Okay, no problem at all. So we're going to run uh, uh, actually a uh, 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 competition. Uh, it's it's going to be an idea competition. And we'll pick uh, the eligible uh, teams for you, and then uh, we'll uh, go on with you. I I, I hope. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Maybe you, at this time, you do not have any further question, but please feel free to go to our website and read the documents. Um, and if you have any other question, feel free to uh, contact us. We are going to send, or maybe we have already sent this presentation to your uh, emails. So for those who participate in the session, so feel free to ask us more questions. And obviously we are waiting for your uh, applications and don't leave to the last minute. Okay, thank you very much for listening to us and for being with us today. Have a nice day and a nice week. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.